Turn, please, in the Scriptures to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 18. In checking my heart about this evening, I believe I'm impressed this direction. Luke chapter 18. And I'm not going to read, uh, I don't think I am, the entire passage here. Just the first verse. Just the first verse. It says, and he, Jesus, spoke a parable to them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now without reading the rest of what he said to them, what was the purpose of him telling them these following verses and accounts. It was so that men, and that's male and female, would what? Ought always to pray and not faint. Uh, Did the Lord instruct us to always pray and not faint? Put up the uh, Young's literal translation if you would says it very similar. It said, uh, he, he spoke also a simile to them that it behooveth us. How many think it behooves and it benefits? Hmm? We ought to and it does us good. <laughs> When's the last time you used that word in a conversation? I think it behooves me. <laughs> or behooves you. Uh, it behooves us always to pray and not to faint. Right, these are the words of the head of the church, the master. We ought to, and it behooves us to always pray and not faint. Look at the Amplified of this. Also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward. (laughs) Not to turn yeller. (laughs) As you might hear in the Westerns. Turn coward, faint, lose heart, give up. So here we see what it means when you do stop praying. It means you went coward. (laughs) Wow. When's the last time you thought about that? I mean, that's... Or you could just say it like this, you gave up. Right? You quit praying about it. Why'd you quit praying about it? You gave up. You quit. uh, King James and others said fainted, which means you... You got weak, you breathed a sigh, you threw up your hands and basically said, no need me praying about that anymore. Nothing's going to happen. Doesn't make any difference. You gave up. The Lord said that's the opposite of continuing to pray. Look with me in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. I want to uh, establish a foundation. So give a few verses to establish this before we go further. What does 1 Timothy 5, 17 say? Pray without ceasing, or we'd say without stopping. Pray without stopping. Uh, Young's literal says, continually pray ye. Now, obviously you don't pray every breath you take. It's not one long, unceasing prayer 24-7. I mean, you're asleep part of the time. You're eating part of the time. You're getting dressed part of the time. You're at work part of the time. So what's he talking about? Prayer is a way of life. And we never get to the place where we say, we're done praying. We're not praying anymore. We pray without 
stopping, we pray as a matter of lifestyle. Say it out loud. Pray, pray. without stopping. Without stopping what? Without stopping praying. Prayer. Jesus said you ought always to pray and not give up. And here in the first Thessalonians it says, pray without ceasing. Um, look in Ephesians 6.18. Here's three witnesses. The Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Here's number three. Ephesians 6.18 says what? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's a lot of all. <laughs> right? <laughs> all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Well, you couldn't get that done in one afternoon. Praying, or in five minutes during a church service. And how, pray tell, could you pray for all saints? How in the world could you pray for all saints? Well, it would take faith, but also, thank God, there's supernatural ability in the spirit filled life to do this which cannot be done naturally. So we got three verses that tell us to pray all the time. Hmm? How many believe this is the Bible? This is right. Pray and keep on praying. Pray as a matter of lifestyle, a way of life. And don't just, you know, pray a lot for a little bit and then go for days and weeks and don't pray and and then get to where you don't, you know, you go for weeks and don't pray, go for months and don't pray. Uh, you, you, we're going to be missing out big time if we do that. We're supposed to pray every day. How many think that would be another way of saying pray without stopping praying? You pray every day. You pray every day. Say it out loud. Pray. Pray. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Pray. 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 So then you can check up. Did you pray today? <laughs> huh? Did you pray today? Well, why do we need to pray? Because there's, uh, you know, people can take parts of a verse or a phrase and twist it. And um, like one individual, I know my, my father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin Sr., who's in heaven now. He said a lady came to him and quoted Romans 8 where it talks about the Spirit helps our infirmities, our weaknesses, in that he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Romans 8. And uh, she, she told Brother Hagin, she said, you know, since I found out that the Holy Spirit does my praying for me, I don't do much praying anymore. <laughs> Is that what he meant? Is that what he said? Since I found out the Holy Spirit did my praying for me. Well, how many understand you must not take a half of a verse you don't understand and ignore all these other scriptures that are telling you to pray. A, a correct understanding of the word is going to agree with other parts of the word. That's why the scripture talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. How do you rightly divide a scripture with other scriptures? That's how you do it. Which is why everybody at Faith Life Church reads their chapter every day, Monday through Friday. Now you can read all you want to beyond that, but you do that as a minimum. And she said, what is that? What is that? Go by the uh, information booth after church and they'll give you a, uh, a card that tells you what chapter we're on. It's interesting that if you'll read one chapter in the New Testament, Monday through Friday, in one year's time, you have read the entire New Testament. Hallelujah. Works out perfect. And so if you hadn't done that, join us. Uh, you're not far off from the beginning. Uh, we're still in the gospel account. So... Uh, um, Join us. 
And if you uh, fell off the wagon <laughs> and got behind, uh, that's all right, you know. Don't feel like I have to catch everything up. It wouldn't hurt you to catch everything up. But you can just start with us on Monday where we are. And how long does it take to read a chapter? Not very long. But when you do it now, give it your full attention. Do not allow yourself to be interrupted with texts and emails and phone calls and all that kind of stuff. We are a perpetually distracted generation because of all of our devices. When I say we, I'm just speaking about the whole. I choose not to be. How about you? You can have times when you are not distracted by technology and you need it. They have a switch on them. <laughs> OFF. Have you, maybe yours has never been OFF. But try it out to see if it works. <laughs> Help your neighbor. Give them a little clue. You know, look at punch them and say, OFF. <laughs> give them a little help. OFF. Try it sometime. <laughs> Uh, three, uh, three places we see already, and there, there are more. That took just a few minutes. Pray. Uh, men ought always to pray. Uh, uh, pray without ceasing. Praying always with all prayer. Say it out loud. Praying always. Pray without ceasing. Go with me, if you would, to the uh, gospel account of uh, Matthew. And actually, I tell you what we'll do. We'll do it like this. We'll start in Mark, and we'll work our way back to Matthew. Mark 1, 35. I want us to observe how Jesus did this, because there's, there's never a better example than him. Did Jesus pray? Yes. Did he? A little bit or a lot? Hmm? Let's remind ourselves. Mark 1, 35. In the morning, rising up a great while before day. That's a long time before daylight. He, he Jesus, went out, departed into a solitary place. Everybody say, no distractions. No distractions. And what did he do? He prayed. He got up early on this occasion, and perhaps this is something, I shouldn't say perhaps, I think you can conclude that this is, was, was a practice of his, uh, that he got up and went out before anybody bothered him. And he prayed to a solitary place where he was not being bothered. And he prayed. Did Jesus pray? Did he do something for no reason? I mean, so he, he must have known that he needed to pray. And if he needs to pray, <laughs> we need to pray. Come on, say it out loud. If Jesus needs to pray, if Jesus needs to pray, if he needed to pray, we need to pray. The Bible talks about Jesus said, the servant is not above his master. But everyone that is perfected or developed will be as the master. And you want, we want, you know, we all want to get results like Jesus got. But you won't be able to get the results Jesus got unless you do what he did. Right? You got to be willing to do what he did if you want to see results like he had. And he's doing what he's doing as a man. He's not doing this as God. That's pretty obvious. He's not operating in omniscience, knowing everything. Or he wouldn't have to seek God about things. Come on, can you see this? The Bible said that when he was baptized in the River Jordan, he came up out of the uh, water praying, said he was praying when that was going on, that the Spirit came on him in a bodily shape and form as a dove, and he was anointed with the Spirit, and immediately you begin to see mighty works happen in his life. They didn't happen prior to that. 
If he's operating as God, the anointer doesn't need to be anointed. Y'all with me, friends? Yes. But since he did, like Philippians talks about, he emptied himself. He laid aside his mighty weight and power and glory and became like other men. Well, then he'd have to be anointed for these kind of things to happen. And so Jesus is giving us an example of how to live, how to function. He's doing this as a man. Somebody said out loud, I can, I can pray, pray, pray like Jesus prayed. Like Jesus can you? Yes. You know what else you can do? You can hear from the Father like Jesus heard from the Father. This is big. You believe this is big? This is big. I can pray like Jesus prayed, if I will. And I can hear from heaven. I can hear from the Father. Like Jesus did. Thank you. Not, not just praying for no reason. But praying and getting response. And getting results. He's not just out there being religious. Is he? He's communing with the Father. We're going to see that more clearly here in just a moment. He's getting direction. For what to do that day. And what to do beyond that. He's getting direction. But we, we got to take time and, and pull, pull apart, and shut off everything. Matthew 5, well, let me just stop right here. You, you'll notice, and it's been that way with me, and I've heard a lot of other people say the same thing. A lot of times I'll get things early in the morning before I'm really fully awake. Mm -hmm. And what you see is that um, it's God's opportune time <laughs> to communicate with us before our head fully kicks in gear. Because <laughs> he's, God is a spirit, not a head, not just a mind. And so he endeavors to communicate with our spirit and your, your head can be so noisy and your body can be so noisy that it, it, it overpowers and drowns out what you should be getting in your spirit. How many remember Proverbs 3 talks about trust the Lord with all your heart and what? Lean Don't lean. Lean not to your understanding. We're to use our minds. We're to use our understanding, but we're not to let it lead us. Amen. When it comes time to make the decision, we don't base the decision on analysis, on logic, on reason, right. on statistics, on any of that that you might get out of your head, we are led by the Spirit of God Amazing. on the inside of us. Often that will be contrary to the info you have at the moment. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. But the one who knows everything Amen. lives inside you. Amen. And the one who knows the future lives inside you, and if we're wise, we'll trust him and follow him. But can you see what an advantage it would be, what it, what it, how, how much uh, it would give place to him if we take times out of our day and our night where we don't have anything else going on, and we're communing with him, and you do it enough till you get your mind quiet. Come on, are y'all with me? Can you see how we'd be hearing more? Amen. We'd be getting more. We'd be operating like Jesus did. Amen. That, that appealed to anybody? Yes. Uh, go with me to uh, Matthew. Actually, I tell you what. In, 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 uh, instead of doing that, just go to Luke for time's sake. This is recorded in both of these places. In Luke 6, verse 12. Luke 6, 12. Did Jesus pray? Yes. Did he pray a lot? Yes. Say it out loud. If Jesus needed to pray, I need to pray. And you need to pray. <laughs> right? If he needed to pray, we need to pray. 
It came to pass, Luke 6, 12, in those days that he, Jesus, went out into a mountain to do what? To pray. And on this occasion, what did he do? He continued all night in prayer to God. Now, they had no electricity back then. And so, you know, they're not sitting up till midnight watching the TV. <laughs> and uh, when it got dark, you know, you can light a candle or an uh, oil lantern or something, and you can do a few things. But most people, not too long after dark, probably made their way to bed. And then so they also got up early, probably about daylight. And uh, so Jesus went out to pray, and he continued praying. So it probably was early, you know, if you, uh, when he started. The, this is hours, without question. Hours that he's out there praying. Isn't he the son of God? Yes. Huh? Yes. This is not a trick question. Yes. <laughs> Isn't he the son of God? Yes, sir. Why did he need to pray for hours? Huh? We, we've already said he's functioning as a man. Amen. Right? Yes. Well, I mean, Jesus has no, he's not praying over the sin in his life. <laughs> There's none. Yes. He's not trying to pray through and get right with the Father. Right. And yet he's praying for hours. You know, maybe eight hours here, maybe more. All night long, he's praying. Why? About what? Why would Jesus need to pray for eight hours? <laughs> we're, we're about to see some things. I'm, I'm, don't, don't give up. Then what he said, pray and don't quit. Right. Don't, don't faint. Why? Why would he need to? It's not because you have to beg God to answer you. And obviously Jesus is not dull and slow. He's not hindered by sin, by anything wrong in his heart. Why would he need to keep praying like this for this length of time? Because of where we are. We're on the earth that is fallen and cursed and dark. And the scripture said, we wrestle not against flesh and, and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. What, what's the issue? The enemy will try to obscure will try to uh, hinder, is a word you see used. Paul himself said, uh, in one of the epistles, he said, uh, we, I would have come to you more than once, but Satan hindered us. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. Is Paul a strong man of faith? Yes. Some people today would have said, well, why did you let the devil hinder you, boy? Mm -hmm. That just means you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. right. Didn't Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say he stopped him. Right? Yeah. Didn't say he stopped him. And if we won't give up and quit, which is why the Lord said, you ought always to pray and don't quit. That's right. Somebody say, don't quit, don't, don't quit. quit, don't quit. If you pray for an hour and you don't get what you're looking for, help me out. Help me out. Don't quit. If you pray for three hours, but you don't have what you're looking for, help me out. Come on. What you do is don't quit. You don't quit. What if I prayed quite a bit yesterday and I still am not clear on it? What do you do? You pray today. That's right. Is that right? Yes. Can you begin to see this pray and don't stop? Pray without ceasing. Pray always with all kinds of prayer. Why? It's not that God is saying, you know, I'm going to wait a while. I'm gonna, I want to see how long they'll go. <laughs> huh. He's a good father. What's going on? It's because of this sin-filled, curse-filled, death-filled, devil-filled place we live. Now, we're born here, and this is all we know. We think it's pretty good. 
And even in its fallen state, it's amazing to see the beauty that remains. But it's cursed. It's fallen. If we could see it before it fell, wow, we'd know the difference. And one of these days, and it won't be too long, one of these days, there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Have you read in the book of Re Revelation, wherein is no curse? We've never been in a place like that. We've never been in a place like that. It is going to be some kind of wonderful. No curse, no pain, no sorrow, no crying, no dying. I'm quoting scripture from Revelation. Do you believe this or not, Christian? Yes. Do we live in a place like that now? No. 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 no, we don't. It's a dark place. It's a curse-filled place. And that's why you don't have to be overly sad when it's come time to go. You're like, hey, I'm blowing this popsicle stand. I'm, I'm out of here, man. Right. But don't leave early. You got a job to do. And we're even told to endure hardness as good soldiers. We need to be willing to put up with some stuff to get our job done. And part of that involves praying and keep on praying. Hmm? Much as it takes. Long as it takes. I want you to see something that was going on with that. I'm not saying this is the only thing that was happening here, but let's read it again and read the very next verse. He said in verse 12, I believe it was, it came to pass in those days, Jesus went out to a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And look what he did the, the, that morning, just minutes or hours later. And when it was day, he called to him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. Reckon there's any connection <laughs> between him praying all night yes. and knowing which ones to pick yes. for the twelve. Yes. Oh, come on, can you see this? Is this important? Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> is, is it important that we get, get them right 12 out of 12? Yes. 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 Is it important? We don't go, oops, you know, I don't know that he should have been in there. Because the Bible tells us among other things that the foundation in the wall of heaven has the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I mean, this is pretty big stuff, is it right? <laughs> Peter, James, John, Matthew, who's that guy? <laughs> Boy, Jesus should have prayed a little bit longer, I guess. I don't, no! Uh, somebody say 12 out of 12. <laughs> How many believe he got them all right? Yes. Exactly right. How did he get them all right? Hmm? I'm going to say, well, he's God. He knew everything. No, that can't be right. He is God. He didn't stop being God, but he became, the scripture said, like other men. If he's functioning in omniscience, why would he need to pray all night long? Come on, can you see this? There would be no need for him to pray all night long. But it's obvious, and the scriptures re reveal it. He's functioning as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. And thank God he's given us that same spirit thank you, Lord. and said out loud again, I can pray, I can pray. like Jesus prayed. Like and I can hear from the Father like Jesus heard from the Father. This is big, yes. isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, these men... What part did they play in the beginning of days of the church? Yes. What part do they play uh, to this day? I mean, we got parts of our Bible named Peter. Right? right? <laughs> First and second Peter. Right? I mean, these, this is the eternal plan of God. And there was a time when they were not the twelve. That night, they were not. The 12 apostles of the Lamb. Yes. How'd they become that? Jesus got by himself while they're all sleeping. Can you see that? Got out by himself and he prayed 
And he prayed, and he prayed, and he just communed with God all night long. Now, when you get in the spirit, time passes. And you're not keeping up with you. Not you know when when you you prayed 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 and it seemed like it's been an hour and you look at your watch it's been five minutes. You're in the flesh. <laughs> you're you're not in the spirit much yet or at all. <laughs> but man, you get to praying and get in in the spirit. You get for lack of a better term, you get caught up. Yes. You get more aware of God and his presence, and what you're talking to him about, and it can seem like it's been five minutes, and it's been two hours. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised that Jesus started praying, and, and after a while, he looks up, and the sun's coming up. Because mm -hmm. hmm? right. yeah. yes. I, I, I don't think he struggled so much in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He had flesh to deal with, mm -hmm. but not being disobedient, and not having sin, all those kind of things, you get there quicker, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> Easier, more direct. Doesn't mean we can't get there. Right. You might say, well, I'm not going to pray like that because I've sinned a bunch. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Because of the blood, you can pray as though you'd never sinned. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You either washed or you're not. Yes. You either forgiven and clean or you're not. Yes. I've had people say, yeah, but preacher, you don't know what I've done. And I said, yeah, and you don't know how powerful the blood is. Amen. The blood, thank God, yes. can, has, does, yes. wash us, cleanse us, so that we can approach the throne of God boldly, Amen. like we got a right to be there. Because yes. by the blood we do. Yes. That's how Jesus prayed. Amen. Bold, mm -hmm. righteous without sin, without condemnation. But he still needed to pray. And so after all night praying, the sun came up, he knew what to do. And he knew who. Come on, can you see this? He knew what, he knew who, he knew where, he knew how. It's good to know. That was weak. How many think it's good? Oh, oh, it's just so good to know. And, 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 and if this is all you came for in the message tonight, this is it right here. Why do so many good church going people not know? They don't pray. Don't pray. Whether it's you or me. Why do so many people not know <laughs> so much? And the problem is, you can get used to not knowing. And you can believe lies. Well, nobody really knows. So we just bump along through life and don't know. And some people say, well, God's in control anyway. And so whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You know, whether we, well, then why even pray? If he's going to do what he's going to do, no matter what you do. If it's already said, there is no need to pray. But that's a lie. Yes. Jesus prayed. Yes. I said, Jesus prayed. Yes. He prayed a lot. Yes. Why would he need to pray if the Father's going to do what he's going to do no matter what? No. Truth is, we can get the plan of God. Yes. Right? Yes. Things that should happen that wouldn't have happened will happen. Yes. If we seek him and don't give up, Till we get what we're supposed to get. And then notice the very, I mean, within hours of him praying all night long, he called a meeting. Is that right? Staff meeting. <laughs> Somebody says, where's Jesus? I didn't hear him get up. He didn't come to breakfast. What's going on? He starts calling names. Because <laughs> he got a list. In prayer. Yes. Is this worth praying? Yes. Oh my, my. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm excited about this right now. Are you excited about this? Friends, we can know so much more than we have known if we're willing to pray. 
We don't have to bump through. Oblivious. Wondering. It's torment to not know what you need to know, right? Do I go or not go? Do I buy this one or not buy this one? Do we, is this the home or is this not the home? Is, is that the one to marry or not to marry? I mean, do I, do I go to school on this or don't go to school on this? Is this the job or is this not the job? Too many church going people just wing it. Know what I mean by that? You know, they might pray a prayer this long. Oh God, help me. Your will be done. Okay, thanks. <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh, what do you think? You haven't heard. Right. That's right. You don't know. Amen. And you got to persevere mm -hmm. through all the noise. Right. All the noise in the world. All the noise in your head. Mm -hmm. Come on, you are with me. Yes. And you may need to stay, I shouldn't say may, you will need to stay with it for lengths of times, you and me. We'll need to stay with it for lengths of times until we get to the place where we are still and we know He is God. We don't have to hear an audible voice. We don't have to see a vision. But we can know. Somebody say no, 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 no. We can know on the inside of us by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2 talks about this. 1 John 2.20, would you put that up please? 1 John 2.20. You have an unction. That's the word for anointing. You have an anointing from the Holy One and what? No. You what? No. You know. Oh, it's good to know. I said it's good to know. Yes. Know before you go. Yes. Right? I mean, don't just go and see what happens. Something bad can happen, right? You can be at the wrong place at the wrong time. What if Jesus had been like a lot of people today? The Father prompted him, you need to pray and spend some time with me and get some direction on this. And he thought, oh, well, God's going to do what he's going to do. And he slept all night, ate a big breakfast, and said, you know, we need some apostles. <laughs> Who wants to do it? Because <laughs> you know, God loves all of us, yeah. right? God loves all of us the same, right? And we need to be inclusive <laughs> and not exclude anybody. I tell you what, let's just all be apostles. We can just all be, a, why stop at 12? <laughs> now you're laughing, but people do things like this. Just based on reasoning, just based on randomness, God is not a random God. He calls all the stars by name. We don't have a clue how many there are. He's got them all named. He keeps track of the number of hairs. On your head. You know how many there are? Within a hundred. Do you know within a hundred? No. Ain't got a clue. <laughs> you might know there's less than there used to be. But if, if it didn't matter, God wouldn't keep up with all that. And if he didn't care, he wouldn't keep up with all that. No, all this looseness, all this, it doesn't matter. God doesn't care. He used to care. Yeah. <laughs> Do you read the scriptures? Yeah. He used to care about details. He used to care about things. When did he change? Yeah. He didn't change. Men have changed. And it's not about, about being legalistic and being in fear. It's just about getting to know who he is. And how he thinks and how he functions and how he operates. And I'm pretty sure if he was too loose with physics, this thing wouldn't work. <laughs> right? If he was too loose with, about gravity and stars and orbit, I reckon this thing would come apart like a cheap watch. Details matter. 
Precision matters. Hmm? Let's say the doctor's working on you. Surgeon's working on you. You want him to be precise? Huh? <laughs> what are we supposed to take out today? Uh, this, I think this other stuff can come out too. Let's, you know, I mean, which side? You know, whatever. Do you want your surgeon saying whatever in the middle of your procedure? <laughs> I think, what do you think? I think this will be okay. Yeah, just patch it up. Huh? Things that matter should be precise. Hmm? Everything that matters should be precise to get the most out of it, for it to work, for it to work properly. Jesus, the master, my hero. Is he your hero? He, he, what, what do you mean? He, he's my hero. He did everything perfect. I want to do it like he did it. I can learn. I can be his disciple. I am his disciple. And I can learn to, to function like he functioned. But I needn't think. I can ignore how he did it and get the same results. The servant's not above the master. I, I'm, if I'm going to get results like he got, I got to do what he did. I got to do it the way he did it. And one thing he did was pray. He prayed. He prayed a lot. And he heard. He got answers. He heard from the Father. Remember, he, he, he sums up his entire ministry by saying, I only say what I hear the Father say. I only do what I see him do. And in praying all night, you're going to hear some things. Right? You're going to see some things. Obviously, he saw himself appointing these 12 as he prayed. I don't mean he was caught up in an open vision. You don't have to be. You can see it in your heart, what we call your mind's eye. Right. Come on, are y'all with me? Yes. If you'll get quiet long enough and pray long enough, you'll start seeing things. I mean, this has happened to myself. This happened to Phyllis. This happened to us many, many times. The results you see in ministry, that's how they've come out. You, 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 see, you see it happening. I, I, not even talking about an open vision now. Just in your heart. In your, what you might call your mind's eye. You see yourself doing this. See yourself going over here. You see yourself being involved in this. And uh, the more you pray about it, the more you know. <laughs> we have an unction of the Holy One. If you're not sure, what do you do? Don't give up. Don't give up. Act like you can't know. You can know. You can know. You can be sure. You can be detailed. If you're willing to stay with it. Keep praying. Keep communing with him. We don't need to stop with, with a part of it. I feel like I should do this. And then run and ask somebody else, how do you do that? <laughs> what do you think? Of no, you didn't stay long enough. You get an inkling of what you should do. You need to stay and find out when. Come on, are y'all with me? Find out where. Find out how. Right? With whom. You need to get the rest of it. Need to get the rest of it. Jesus got it. He knew exactly who was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Not eleven, not thirteen, not this one instead of that one. There was no ambiguity. There was no discussion. There was no committees. That's good. No, you didn't hear me. <laughs> there was no vetting. Amen. There was no process. Excuse me. There was a process. He just went through it last night. Yes. <laughs> Come on, are y'all with me? But there was no man-made process. There was no wrangling. There was no fussing. There was no voting. Come on, can you see this? Did he get it right? Yes. Exactly. It's still right today, thousands of years later. It'll still be right thousand years from now when you go by the base of the wall in the new city and read their names. That's right. It'll be right. It's right forever. That's worth a few hours one night. Come on, are you with me? That's worth a few hours 
yeah. one night to get something right the rest of your life and even eternity. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's easily worth Amen. missing some sleep. That's right. You can take a nap that afternoon. Right. Right? right? You'll be okay. <laughs> Did I lose somebody? No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise God, praise God, praise God. Go with me to James 5. James 5. He's talking about prayer. He's talking about healing. And then he expands to more about prayer just in general. James 5. <clears throat> we'll begin reading in verse uh, 13. James 5, 13 said, Is any among you afflicted? Afflicted means going through trials, going through tests, challenges. Is any among you afflicted? Get counseling. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Is any among you going through trials and tests? Get counseling. No. Where is that verse? <laughs> Is any among you Going through tests and trials and challenges and problems, ask other people to pray. It said what? Let him pray. Let who pray? Him, the, the him that's going through the test and trial, let him pray. Because him needs to hear. Right? About his situation. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing how people want to do all kind of stuff except pray. I, I've been with folks before and they, you know, they wanted counseling and I didn't have anything in my heart to counsel with them. I said, let's just kneel down here and pray. And it made them mad. <laughs> they didn't come for prayer. <laughs> well, that's a problem. Because no matter what I might say, it's not going to change this. That's right? right? Amen. And he said, right. if you're going through some stuff, pray. let him pray. pray. There's a lot of praying, my friend, that nobody can do for you. Right. You can try to put it off on them, but it's not going to work. Right. And I'm not saying nobody can pray for you. You know they can. But there's some praying people can't do for you. There's some things that are personal and the only you can do. That's true. Yeah. Amen. And it depends on your condition. I mean, you know, if you're able to do your laundry, mm -hmm. don't ask me to do it for you. Right. <laughs> do your own laundry. Right? right? I mean, yeah. if you now you know, if you if you're laid up and you can't do your laundry, I might, might <laughs> do, do your laundry for you. <laughs> but if you're able to mow your own grass, uh -huh. right? If you're able to vacuum your own floor. Amen. Why turn in requests for other people to vacuum your floor? Right. Amen. Oh, I lost some. Did I lose somebody? <laughs> people <are> like, well, <laughs> too many people turning in requests for prayer that won't pray for themselves, right. and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I said it doesn't work. Yes, sir. God's not going to give them answers that He'll only give you. Some things are personal. They're private. They're between you and him. You're only going to get them when you pray. Somebody say, let him pray. Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Psalms. See, it'd be like me if I came up and said, you know, I'm happy. You sing. <laughs> can, can you see both of these are the, the same kind of thing? I'm in trouble, you pray. Uh -huh. yeah. It's the same as saying, 
I feel great. Sing. <laughs> you sing. Yeah. No. If you're married, let him. Everybody say, let him. Let him. Yeah. Might, might not hurt to underword, underline those two words. Let yeah. him. You happy? You sing. Right. You going through some stuff? You pray. Not to say I can't pray for you and other people can't pray for you, but we can't do your praying for you. I've had men tell me oftentimes, say, well, you know, my, my wife's the prayer in the family. I said, she can't do your praying for you. Thank God she's a prayer and, and a good one. But she can't do your praying for you. Nobody can. And if you try to turn it over to, to other people, What's going to happen is you're not going to know. There's so much stuff you're not going to know. You're going to bump along and you're going to make mistake after mistake after mistake because you hadn't heard from him. And the Lord's merciful, but there's no reason to make all these mistakes when we can seek him and wait on him and get direction, get answers. Amen. Is it possible that we can pray and pray extra if we need, if we need to? Pray all night. How many understand some big things and big moves in life? Mm -hmm. I mean, praying all night would be a small thing. Yes. Right? right? Yeah. To get it right? Yes. To get your marriage right? <laughs> to get your job and career right? Yes. Right. Church you go to, the ministry involved, it, get it right? Yeah. That's nothing. Like I said, you can take an afternoon nap. Yes. Be great. Uh, <laughs> but it, we can know, is it possible, just like Jesus prayed all night and he knew exactly who to pick, what position to place a man, what to do going forward. Can we know something like that? Yes. Is it possible yes. for us to pray like he prayed yes. and know like he knew? Yes. We've got other scripture says, you have, an, you have an unction of the Holy One. And you know all things you need to know. Keep going. Verse 14, he talks about the sick. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Now this implies, if you look up these words, it implies somebody that's in bad shape that might not be able to pray for their self. And in this case, thank God you can. Let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith there's a lot about prayer in here, isn't there? Prayer, yep. prayer, yep. prayer. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed sins, they'll be forgiven him. And you can see why the Spirit of God's talking about prayer. Verse 16, he goes into prayer in a broader sense now. He says, confess your faults one to another and what? Pray, pray, pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent, Prayer of a righteous man avails much. Do we need to pray? Yes. Jesus prayed. Do we need to pray? Yes. Will it do any good? Yes. Will all this praying do any good? Yes. He said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails, you might say, accomplishes much. We're going to see that in another translation in just a moment. Keep reading. He gives an example of, of Elijah. The, the Greek to English calls it Elias, but it's talking about Elijah. Was a man subject to like passions as we are. Now this is a whole sermon right here. Elijah didn't float on clouds. Huh? Elijah got hungry just like you do. Elijah had feelings that weren't wonderful just like you do. Hmm? In fact, if you read the whole story, when Jezebel was after him to kill him, you know, he ran away. Remember that? And ask God to let him die. Let him come home. He said, I'm the last one left. Lord, you know, I'm the only one you got left down here. Just take me on home. Take me home. Take me here. Just take me home. And the Lord said, you're not the last one. I got thousands that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. So Elijah was having a bad day. Right? Right? He, he, I'm, not, I'm not bringing it up. The scripture brought it up that he's a man subject to like passions and feelings as us. And he prayed earnestly. 
So I reckon this wasn't a three minute prayer maybe. And if you read the passage, you'll find that, that there was more involved. That it what might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Here the scripture is attributing that entire part of the world's climate was affected for three and a half years because this man prayed. We believe the Bible or not. Yes. Climate's a pretty big deal. The atmosphere, wind currents, rainfall, all of this over a, over a space of hundreds of miles. You got to include thousands of miles when you figure where it comes from and how it blows through. No scientist has figured out how to control it yet. God said prayer can control it. He's bringing it up, isn't he? He brought it up because he's talking about prayer. He said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And then he wants to give you an example of what he's talking about. Elijah prayed and it affected the climate of the whole region. Not for a week. Three and a half years. Verse 18. And then he prayed again. And heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. A lot of people don't believe this. They mock. They make fun. They wouldn't believe if the churches got together and prayed, that it, would, it would affect the, the weather for a half a day. They think it's ridiculous. They think we're just... Poor, ignorant folks that need the crutch of religion. I want to boldly declare the Lord spared this place from a hurricane. Hmm? You believe it or not? Now, I know some people did get affected, but it would have been, were you here? <laughs> did you see what was going on? Did you hear it? Something happened. Something happened. God gutted that thing. Is that right? Yes. Dry air flowed into that thing and cut the life out of it yes. over the gulf. Amen. The gulf is not dry air. Amen. Right? I mean all the natural things. It should have been fueled. It should have been a monster like it was down in the islands and maybe more. God spared us. I said he spared us. Yes. Spared. I know some, some folks got hurt, but it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Was any prayer involved? Did yes. you think it mattered? You were there. I mean, when we stood up in Branson, we all prayed together. We released our faith. And Big sister was hooked with you. Yes. Yeah. You can be hooked with him too on another, on another occasion. But uh, many have come to the place where they don't believe this. They don't believe that a prayer would affect the weather. They just think folks are imagining things. But I believe the Bible. And I, and I know from some small experience, I've seen the Lord do it over and over and over again. You have not because you didn't ask and because you didn't use your authority. No, let's read it again. Verse 15, excuse me, verse uh, uh, 16. And I'll put this up in the Amplified, please. James 5, 16. Confess you to one another your faults. And pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The earnest, heartfelt, continued. There it is again. Pray without ceasing. Prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. What kind of power does it take to control what's the atmosphere go up to? 90,000 feet over the space of hundreds and hundreds of miles? What kind of force are you talking about? What kind of power are you talking about? <laughs> A prayer? 
can change that. <laughs> if a prayer, oh, come on, are you listening or not? If a prayer can change the flow and operation of trillions of cubic feet of space and moisture content and air flows and jet currents and all of that. Why couldn't a prayer adjust your kidney? Huh? Amen. Or affect your blood pressure or, or your heart or your finances. Or, oh, friends, we got, we got so much available to us that we haven't been fully utilizing. The prayer, earnest. So you're not playing around. Heartfelt. Continued. You don't just do it for two minutes and quit. Prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. That's no exaggeration when you read these next two verses. If you don't think tremendous power was available and made uh, effect in that, then you're not paying attention. Tremendous. Come on, say it out loud. Tremendous. 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 Power available. So just in our first lesson here tonight on this, we've seen two big things. Prayer made available tremendous knowledge. Can you see, can you see that? Yes. Knowing the plan of God. Knowing who, where, when, how. Also here we see prayer makes tremendous power <laughs> available. Knowledge. Knowledge of the plan of God. Knowledge of what to do and power, tremendous power. I reckon we ought to do some more praying. Oh, yeah. What do you think, saints? What do you think? Makes tremendous power available. Verse 17, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have. Feelings, affections, constitution like ours. He prayed earnestly for it not to rain. And what happened? It didn't rain. For three years and six months. Verse 18. Then he prayed again and the heavens supplied rain and the land produced its crops as usual. No matter what scientists and skeptics may say, I believe this. Amen. How about you? And the Bible's reminding us he is not somebody who is above everything and couldn't relate to you. He's not some superhuman being that wouldn't understand uh, how you operate. He's just like us. Can you see what he's saying? Just like you. Got feelings, got issues, made mistakes, had a rough day, just like you. What's he telling us? You can pray like this too. You can get results like this too. Stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You may want to hurry and get home and... <laughs> and pray. <laughs> you may get going real good and want to pray a long time. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, let's do some right now. Right? We can pray with our understanding. We can pray with the Spirit. We're going to be talking about that later. So if that's new to you, we're going to be talking about that. Such a wonderful, wonderful, amazing component to our prayer life. Lift up your voice. Say it out loud, Father God. Father God we, love we love you. We're so glad, We're so glad to, be your children, to be your children, to be your family. Be your family. We're, thankful We're thankful that we can come, we can come boldly, boldly to your throne. To your throne. We, can pray. we can pray. We can talk to you. You will hear us. You will answer us. Show us how Jesus prayed. How Elijah prayed. How Paul prayed. How we are to pray. Help us to get rid of any wrong thinking, wrong believing, wrong ideas about prayer. Enlighten us. Teach us. Illuminate our understanding and our heart. Fill us 
with the knowledge of your will concerning all these things in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Teach us to pray. And we'll be glad to respond and draw near to you. Let you draw near to us and commune with you. Commune with your spirit even as Jesus did. Hallelujah. Pray in the spirit.